Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, passion for excellence, and by Dow Automotive Systems, innovations for clean powertrain solutions. This is AutoLine Daily for April 4th, 2011. We'll be getting into the latest sales figures later in the show, but now the news. And there was a big victory for Toyota in the first lawsuit it faced over unintended acceleration. The case involved the doctor from Long Island, New York, and his Toyota Scion. The doctor claimed it suddenly accelerated out of control and crashed into a tree. He blamed the floor mats, or defects in the electronic throttle control, as the cause of the accident. But the jury did not agree with the doctor and found that Toyota was not liable for any product defect. Here's my AutoLine Insight. This is an important victory for Toyota, but the company faces many more lawsuits on this issue and it may not win them all. The Chinese keep getting into more and more market segments. Cherry's going to unveil a limousine for its luxury brand at this year's Shanghai Auto Show. According to China AutoWeb, it's a stretch version of the rich G6 called the Paramount. Cherry wants to boost the image of the rich brand, which has struggled to catch on in China. The Paramount is equipped with a turbo 2-liter that's made into a 5-speed automatic from Hyundai. The seven-passenger model is expected to cost half a million yuan, which is around $76,500. Another Formula One driver is making the jump to NASCAR. Former Formula One champion Kimi Raikkonen is going to race a limited schedule in the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series, and he's going to race for Kyle Busch's team. Raikkonen, who is currently racing his own team in the World Rally Car Championship, will make his NASCAR debut at the Charlotte Motor Speedway on May 20th. Sponsorship details will be announced later, but it sounds like Raikkonen needs to bring his own sponsors in order to race. There's more controversy in Dearborn over executive compensation. According to the Detroit News, Ford CEO Alan Mulally's pay was revealed in a filing with the Securities and Exchange Commission. Given the company's strong performance, his earnings for 2010 rose 48% to nearly $27 million. When you add the stock he was recently awarded into the mix, he's pocketing around 83 million bucks. But Mulally's not alone. Bill Ford Jr. received nearly $27 million for 2010, plus about $43 million bucks in stock. Really pays to be on top. While these figures are not out of line with other corporate executives in the U.S., they will cost the company when it comes time to renegotiate its contract with the UAW. If you own a smartphone, there's literally an application for everything. Need to count the number of steps you walk in a day? Check. Want to control the lights in your house? Not a problem. Adding to the list, a software development company called Bohemian Innovation is introducing an app for first responders. It's called Extraction Zone, and it lets firefighters and rescuers know where it's safe to cut with the jaws of life. Cables and batteries are packaged in different places on different vehicles, especially on hybrids and electric vehicles, so you never know for sure if you're going to crunch into a power supply or slice through some high voltage wires. Coming up next, a look at who's hot and who's not when it comes to new car sales in the American market. And there are more than a few surprises in the numbers. Reducing exhaust emissions, airified diesel particulate filters, high filtration, low back pressure, small package size, excellent durability. DowAerify.com. The sales numbers for the U.S. market for March started coming in on Friday, but now we've got all of them to report, and it sure was a good month. More than 1.2 million vehicles were sold, a 12.4% increase over a year ago. That's on a daily selling rate basis, as reported by Wards. That put the annualized rate, or SAR, at 13 million units. And for the first time in a long time, cars outsold trucks for the month, with cars hitting almost 52% market share, a clear indication that higher gasoline prices are affecting what consumers buy. Almost every automaker sold more vehicles, with some notable exceptions. Sales fell at Lexus, Toyota, and Jaguar. 
Toyota had a pretty good month a year ago, but that doesn't fully explain why sales were down. The best performers were Kia, up nearly 40%, Mitsubishi up 34%, Hyundai up almost 27%, and Chrysler up 25%. Saab achieved a 500% increase, but that's compared to an abysmally low number a year ago, and it's not a sign that the Swedish brand is suddenly catching fire. The best-selling car in America was, surprise, surprise, the Nissan Altima. In fact, Nissan and Infiniti sold more vehicles than Chrysler, making Nissan the fifth largest automaker in America. Even so, Chrysler must be pleased to see that its redesigned lineup is selling strong. In fact, in a sign that advertising does matter, sales of the Chrysler 200 ran real strong, up more than 40% over the Sebring. And of course, the 200 benefited from that ad in the Super Bowl with rapper Eminem. But Chrysler will be worried to see that the Ford Explorer powered past the Jeep Grand Cherokee. The Grand Cherokee saw sales jump 58%, but the Explorer was up 103%. But the big news overall is that Ford outsold General Motors. And that's despite the fact that Ford dropped Mercury last year and Lincoln really didn't have a very good month. Hybrid sales were up 45%, but almost all of that increase came from two cars, the Toyota Prius and the Lexus HS250. But even with that increase, hybrid sales are still less than 3% of the market. All in all, it was quite a good month compared to the last three years. While the market shifted more towards cars than trucks, sales were up in almost every segment. So far, higher gasoline prices and the production shutdowns due to the Japanese earthquake have not hurt the market, but now we'll have to wait and see what happens this month. Hey, a new episode of Roundabout is out. This week, the ROAB crew welcomes John Volker from GreenCarReports.com and reveals what legislator is actually defending the right to drive drunk. Get it all at AutolineDetroit.tv. And that's today's report on the top news in the global auto industry. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.